Hi, welcome to C programming for Arduino, a step by step guide. Previously, we have discussed this code which brings two LEDs one by one with one second pause. Now consider this line at the end of this code. This statement simply takes the R value of counter, increments it by one, and assigns the new value back into the R value of counter. In other words, the statement is an increment operator. This is such a common operation that C includes a special operator called the increment operator that is designed specifically to increment a variable. There are two types of increment operator, pre-increment and post-increment. The pre-increment operator is written like this. The interpretation is that the R value of the variable counter is fetched its value incremented and then used in whatever expression in which it happens to appear. The post increment operator is written like this. In this case, the R value of the variable counter is fetched and used in the expression and then incremented. Notice that this symbol is increment operator and it appears after the variable name with the post increment operator and before the variable name in the pre increment operator. What exactly is the difference between these two types? To understand this, consider the following code fragment. What is the value of k here? Because this is a pre increment operator, the value of c, which is 5, is fetched, its r value is then incremented to 6, and then the value is assigned into the r value of k. So k is now equal to 6. Now change the last statement in the code and replace pre increment operator by a post increment operator. In this instance, the R value of C, which is 5, is fetched, then that R value is assigned into K, and then variable C is incremented. In this case, K equals 5, not 6 as before, but C is equal to 6. The rule is simple. A pre-increment operator increments the R value before it is used in an expression, whereas post-increment uses the R value in the expression and then increments the R value. The decrement operator is similar to the increment operator, but is used to decrease the R value of a variable by 1. This code shows pre-decrement operation. This causes the R value of C to be fetched, its R value decremented to 4, and that value is then assigned into K, leaving both variables C and K with the value of 4. This code shows the post-decrement operation, causes the R value of C to be fetched, and its R value is assigned into K, and then its R value is decremented. As a result, K equals 5 but C equals 4. It should be noted here that both increment and decrement operators require only one operand. This table shows all the precedence of operators used in C. We will use this table in the future code examples to check and discuss the priority of operations. In the previous video, we discussed this code which uses cascaded if statement block. This code tells you what day it is on the basis of the value in the variable myData. Value 1 through 7 corresponds to the days Sunday through Saturday. For example, if the value of variable myData is 1, then day is Sunday, and function do Sunday stuff is called. If value of variable myData is 2, then it's Monday, and function do Monday stuff is called. Now consider the syntax for the switch state. If we compare this syntax with previous discussed my day example, then each case statement block would correspond to a day of the week. The last case statement block would then be for case 7. If expression 1 somehow had a value other than 1 through 7, then the default statement block is executed, perhaps issuing some kind of error message or condition. For example, it can turn a red LED on. In other words, if a value for expression 1 does not match any case value, the default statement block is executed. You can think of the default statement block as a catch all for any value that doesn't have a corresponding case value for its statement block. The expression 1 must evaluate to an integral data type. That is, expression 1 could be a byte, character, integer, or long data type, including the unsigned counterparts, but it cannot be a floating point type and a reference data type. Note that braces are not used to delineate a case statement block. Within the switch statement, case statement blocks begin with the colon character and extend through the break statement. So where does program control go once it processes a break statement? 
A break statement causes program control to jump to the first statement following the closing brace of the switch statement. If you forget the break statement for a given case, then program execution falls through to the next case statement. This can be a potential source of errors in your programs. However, there are also times when two case values may need to execute the same program statements. In those situations, the case fall through can actually simplify the code. Just make sure your design matches what the code does. Consider the following code example which is alternate LED bin program discussed previously. Now look at these two statements. For a beginner, numbers 12 and 13 do not make any sense. Now change this part of the code like this. Now the data definitions at least give some idea of what the numeric values 12 and 13 mean in the program. Plus, it makes the purpose of LED1 and LED2 a little more clear. When the compiler takes over and starts compiling your program code, you can think of it actually making two passes through the code. On the first pass, the compiler looks for directives that it must process before it can actually start compiling your program code. These directives are called preprocessor directives because they must be preprocessed before the compiler can do its thing. Following table presents the preprocessor directives for Arduino C. It should be noted here that only hash define and hash include are supported. Also, note that preprocessor directives are really not statements because they are not terminated with the semicolon. Let's discuss the hash define preprocessor. It has two benefits. First, the hash define preprocessor directive gives you a way to define a constant in a more meaningful way. To understand the second benefit, let's discuss some code. Suppose you have the following code fragment in your program. This code shows that minimum fine which can be imposed on a car is 125. For truck, it is 125 and for motorcycle, it is also 125. Now suppose the fine changes and the minimum truck fine becomes 150. Truck fine must be changed in the whole code. Now use this code fragment. We do not need to change the variable everywhere in the code. Now you can go to just one spot in the code and make the following change. Recompile the program and all the instances where the truck fine is used are correctly changed to the new value. One more thing about preprocessor directives that you need to keep in mind is that any hash define is a textual substitution in the source code and nothing else. As such, all hash defines are a typeless data declaration that is, they do not have any L value in the symbol table and their data type is also not checked. Indeed, once the preprocessor pass is finished, none of the hash defines exist anymore. They have all been substituted with their appropriate constant. Consider the following example. You have given hash define a fourth value. The last statement is trying to place a floating point number into an integer. Clearly, this is probably not what the programmer intended. But the Arduino C compiler does not complain. The compiler simply truncates value to 3 for the variable my value. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.